Hi guys, Buildzoid here, and today we're going to be taking a look at basically why I don't repair things for people. So, here we have a GTX 980 Ti um, reference PCB that I picked up off of eBay for 53 quid because it was broken. Um, didn't work, burnt component on the PCB, and I figured, okay, you know what? Um, that sounds like, that's PCB level damage, right? That's not silicon damage, so it's not like dead memory chips or dead core because those are really, really hard to repair. Um, as in, you can't repair silicon damage, you just have to replace the damaged parts of silicon. Uh, damaged pieces of silicon, so basically I was like, oh, this just has board level damage, yeah, let's, let's try fix it. Worst case scenario, I learned something. Best case scenario, I get a working 980 Ti. Um, so, uh, worst case scenario panned out. I, I've learned something, which is uh, check all of your feedback circuitry. Um, all well, or at least try to, because that that is obviously very, very difficult to do. So before we take a look at the the current condition in more detail of the card, let's take a look at how the card turned up. So this is what the card looked like when I first got it. All right. So we can clearly see that that yeah um, that that power stage right there. Yeah, it ate it. Um, so completely nuked power stage right here. And uh, so that's bad, <laughs> right? Right off the bat, that is, that is really, really bad. And essentially, it means that, well, the card doesn't turn on because the vCore VRM is broken. Um, so I decide, okay, um, since the vCore doesn't, doesn't work, um, I'm just going to try, you know, replace the vCore VR. Well, my first idea was, hey, let's just try cut out the short circuit in the area. Remove the power stage, you know, get rid of all the charred PCB and, and see if we can't get it to start working that way. Well, uh, that that did not work out. Um, so yeah, here's a closer picture of the damage. So yeah, we, we can see that that power stage is just completely, like, looks like it might have even been the, I don't know, high side might have blown up. I think that's where the high side of MOSFET probably is. So anyway, this thing completely blew up. Good chance that it killed the GPU core in the process, so I, I just still don't know if the GPU core even worked, so, uh, you know. At, at this point, I know for a fact it doesn't because of a different issue that I created. Well, I'm not sure if it wasn't an issue before. I might have just made it worse. Um, <laughs> so, anyway, but basically, yeah, so th this was scorched. Uh, good chance the GPU core was dead. There was a short circuit from 12 volts to ground, from V core to ground, from just everywhere to ground. There was short circuits everywhere, so... Uh, essentially, I decided, okay, let, let's try remove the short circuit. Um, here's the back of the card, you know, more damage, basically. And, uh, yeah, here's a, like, you know, full full board shot of the back. And, yeah, th this is, like, the only obvious damage. And uh, here's a front shot. And here's basically what, where I decided, okay, let's, let's just try remove the short circuit. So I chewed out as much of the PCB as I could. The short circuit's was still there, so at that point I decided, okay, you know what, screw it. I'm just going to e-power the vCore VRM and hope for the best, right? If the memory VRM is still fine, then I just need to replace the vCore VRM. So that's why at the, the, in this photo you're seeing actually all of the inductors removed is because, um, yeah, I was, I was getting ready to e-power it. So today um, I actually got around to e-powering the card and, uh, yeah, so that's the back up to the start. So that, that's how we got to... Um, where we are now with with the card right here. So yeah, I have the red e-power on it. Um, it's not fully hooked up as you can clearly see. I don't really have a lot of uh, a lot of uh, power connections here. This is just to see if the card even has a chance of running, right? Like again, um, the vCore VRM blew up. There's a very good chance when your vCore VRM dis dies that depending on which MOSFET dies and in which way, um, you're going to end up with everything on the other side of the vCore VRM completely roasted. So um, here I was suspecting like, oh yeah, it looks like it might have bridged, like the high side MOSFET might have failed to closed. And if that's the case, then there's a good chance that your vCore output went to say, well, went well above 2 volts. There's a pretty good chance that it went above 2 volts. And basically if you apply much more than 2 volts to any piece of modern silicon, um, that, that's like a GPU or something, you apply much more than 2 volts to that, it's dead. Okay, at that point it's just dead. Um, you're not going to repair it, 2.1 volts, everything dies immediately almost. Um, so, 
Especially if it's at ambient temperature when that happens. If you're sub-zero, you might have a few set, like maybe an hour or two before, before you have a problem, but at ambient temperature, two volts translates into dead chips. So I wasn't really sure if the core worked, which is why I didn't bother hooking up the e-power fully, because it's like, well, if it's dead, then I'd have to desolder the whole thing, and that's a pain. So just some basic connections to, to get some power transfer just to get the, the card to, to boot up. Um, so that, that's great. And so the card, I tried to fire it up. It doesn't fire up. And I'm like, okay, so why doesn't it fi fire up? And I start the usual you know, process of just checking our various rails with the multimeter, which is the mistake that I made. So I checked vCore. vCore is good because we have the ePower. ePower is pushing 1.09 volts. On the PCB, we're getting 1.09 volts. So we're, yeah, the voltage, like the power is coming across. Everything's good. Uh, everything's good in that department. So. Next, I check the PEX rail, so that's the, the PCIe power, which is down here. Um, check that, and uh, yeah, that's running. That's at 1.05 volts, so that's in spec. That's all good. Um, so at that point, I'm just like, okay, so is the memory VRM running, right? Uh, memory VRM was floating, well, was not running at 1.5 volts. It should be at 1.5 volts, and it was at like... I think one time it was at 0.6, and then for a bit it was at like, and on another attempt it was at 0.3, and it was just kind of all over the place, and that, that's on the multimeter. Um, and the thing is, so I decided, okay, I guess the, the enable pin or something is, is causing it to come down, which was the, uh, that's where I made the mistake. Well, I, I mean, I don't know what was actually going on, because like six, 600 millivolts on a multimeter could very easily be, uh, a lot more voltage if you actually checked it in like with, with an oscilloscope, right? Your peak voltage could be way above that. But anyway, I was like, okay, it's probably just getting pulled low because we've replaced the vCore VRM and, and it's complaining. So I went on the back of the card and right, basically right here, uh, there was a transistor which pulls the enable pin of the uh, memory VRM low if the, uh, well, if there's some kind of issue. So I removed that transistor and I powered up the card again. Except this time, the output of the memory VRM wasn't 1.5 volts or 0 0.6 volts or 0 0.3 volts. It was 3.3 volts. So, yeah. <laughs> Everything's dead now. And I assume the reason why that happened is because, I mean, I didn't think that, like, essentially, uh, the memory voltage controller is right here. So I'm assuming, and the memory VRM is right here, so I figured, like, the feedback lines could go through basically anywhere. Like, they could have run them up along the top edge and then come down here if they wanted to, like, I don't know where the feedback lines go. I don't have a schematic. So I assumed that the way this was, the, the voltage controller was w wired up, it basically wasn't, like, there wasn't anything important in this area of the PCB, which got nuked, right? Um, first by the, the MOSFET and then me trying to remove the short circuit. Um, so at that point, I'm like, okay, so, uh, well, at, th at this point, it's just like, okay, so evidently what's happened is the voltage control circuitry for the, for the memory VRM went through that area or some other area and it, and, and it got damaged, um, probably went through that area. And uh, yeah, since that area is not there, the memory controller, the memory voltage controller was spitting out 3.3 volts. So that's, that's a dead card because <laughs> 3.3 volts, like the memory chips are toast, that's, that's twice spec voltage. Okay, and it's just like, well, funnily enough, DDR4 runs fine on like 2.1 volts, which is almost twice the spec. But the thing is, like, at this point, um, the card is very likely very, very dead. Um, so, yeah. Which is really annoying. Like, I, I didn't think, like, so, like, basically, I think, essentially why I think I was getting that, like, 0 0.6 volts reading and the 0 0.3 volts reading was... The, the VRM would start up, right? It would start up, and the voltage would start going up, which, um, yeah, the voltage would start going up, and then it would hit an over-voltage protection, and it would start uh, turn the VRM off, and then it would power cycle itself, so it would start, start raising the voltage again, which is why I was getting, like, a weirdly low voltage reading, and I was like, oh, it's tripping enable or something. 
Um, yeah, so I don't know where that was originally spiking to, but now it spits out 3.3 volts. So, I mean, I'm still going to try power it up um, with another power board um, set to spit out 1.5 volts. But at this point, I'm like 99% certain that this, me like the memory and the memory controller on the GPU are dead. Just completely dead. So, yeah. Um, good job, me. Um, I'm, yeah, that, that's basically it. Th this is why... Um, yeah, I don't know what else to say here. It's just like memory VRM spits out 3.3 volts. And this is why you check your voltage with an oscilloscope and not with a multimeter. Or if you have a multimeter like my, like technically speaking, my multimeter does have an indicator for like fluctuating voltage, though I don't know what frequency that goes up to. So, um, but I didn't bother to look at that. I was just like, oh, it's 0.6 volts. It has to be... <laughs> So yeah, um, basically the same situation as my uh, as the as the Vega sixty four, if you remember that one, where I was like, why is it not getting any core voltage? Oh, I don't know. It's because there was a short circuit to ground on feedback, you idiot. Um, so yeah, so basically the card would go up to two volts, trip over voltage protection, shut down. We similar similar thing right here with this memory VRM. Good job, me. So yeah. Anyway, that's it for the video. Thanks for watching. Like, share, subscribe. Leave any comments, questions, suggestions down in the comment section below. Um, and yeah, I mean, I, I kind of want, like, I do want to try again now that I know that this is a possible failure, but th th like, this could get really expensive really quick. So, and I've already bought like a bunch of other stuff, like I bought a bunch of stuff. So, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm going to not buy any more dead cards because like, I'm, I'm probably just going to kill them harder. Anyway, that's it for the video. Thanks for watching. And, oh, yeah, if you'd like to support AHOC, um, there's the AHOC Patreon. The t-shirts are currently a complete mess, so those aren't available. So, yeah, goodbye.